having trouble finding cool stuff, like the action figure featured in this review. Don't lose your head over it. Go visit headhunterstore.com they have awesome selection of toys and collectibles, including comic book related figures from Diamond Select, Hasbro, and more. Click the link in the description below. Greetings, true collectors. After all the technical problems and health issues it is finally here, first of many reviews from Breathing Machine Productions sponsored by Headhunter Store, hosted by yours truly, Kiefer. When it comes to comic books, I have always been a Marvel guy. I guess, that is, because I grew up surrounded by my big brother's comic collection that mostly consisted of Marvel comics. As a kid, I loved the animated series, like the X-Men and Spider-Man, as well as the awesome comics from 60s and 70s. What started my fandom in the mid-80s were the classic Fantastic Four comics. My first Marvel comic I ever read was the Fantastic Four issue 1, and I was hooked right away. Fantastic Four felt more realistic compared to other teams, they felt like a real family, with constant squabbling, and holding grudges, but when the push came to shove they would put their differences aside, and work together, as a team. I also liked the fact they died and have secret identities, instead they chose to live as celebrities, which made them unique from other teams. They quickly became my favorite superhero team. I have been a lifelong Marvel fan, but for some reason I never got into collecting Marvel figures. When the guys at Headhunter Store offered me a great deal on bunch of Marvel Select figures, I thought I'd be take the plunge, and finally start my own Marvel collection. And what better character to start with than the heart of the Fantastic Four, the monster you is the thing. Let us see, is this figure a huge success, or just a giant plastic turd? Packaging the thing comes packaged in the same style blister card packaging like all the previous Marvel Select releases. It showcases the figure with an on a really nice orange card back featuring some cool comic book style artwork of the thing on the left side of the box. While on the back of that packaging it has a great image of the action figure itself along with a brief description of the character. Lower part of the box gives us a look of the other figures available in the Marvel Select toy line. Alright, let's go ahead, and release this giant from his plastic prison. First thing you notice about this figure is the sheer size of it. The thing is quite a sight to behold and he truly is a massive action figure. Diamond Select has really created something special here. Figure is perfectly in scale with the other Marvel Select releases, and he towers over the other smaller figures. Not only is he tall, standing just over 8 inches, but he is really wide as well. You can really feel the weight when you're holding him in your hands. He weighs a whopping 2.3 pounds, which is a lot for a 7 inch scale action figure. That's a big chunk of plastic. Sculpt. Looking at the overall design, this particular figure seems to be modeled after the more modern Man I Venice design of the thing, with the long legged pants and splintered rock look, compared to the Jack Kirby's original more reptilian, scaly design, with the short trunks. Diamond Select is known for their amazing sculpts, and this one is no exception. The entire figure is beautifully sculpted. The thing here has a lot of great details on his body. All of the little details such as different textures, the rock detailing, and the shading look great and are done really well. He has got some nice cracks and crevices all over the upper body that really give him that rocky texture. The face sculpt captures the thing's classic comic book appearance really well. He has the massive outwardly brow ridge and the long lower jaw. He has got nice grumpy expression in his face, that's very comic accurate, but I wish it showed a bit more emotion. 
head sculpt does look a bit off to me, the head looks too small compared to the body size. I don't know if that was a conscious design choice to accentuate his huge body even more, but it looks kind of funny. He has got these two huge hammers for hands that are bigger than his head. The fists have some smashing, no pun intended, sculpted details on the knuckles and fingers. He has thick, elephant-like legs, and you know what they say about guys that have big feet. One of the things I really love is that the pants aren't just painted on, you can see that there's a lot of sculpted line detailing. S got some great wrinkles and folds sculpted on his pants, around the knees, and even on the boots there. Overall, he is really impressive looking figure with a beautiful sculpted details that makes him stand head above the rest. Painting now, the paint on this figure is mostly really, really good. He is painted with really nice orange color, and he has light blue pants that have darker blue paint spray to give the fabric more volume. As you can see here, they have added some dark brown wash on orange base coat to finish the realistic, rocky look and really bring out the details. I am not a big fan of it, I think they went a little overboard with it because it makes him look more dirty and grimy than defined. I wish they toned it down a little bit, but it is not as glaring as it was with Marvel Select Hulk. Looking at his face, you can see he has really beautiful blue eyes that really jump out from the orange face. It's amazing how much detail they got into the eyes. Paint application in the face is a little bit sloppy with this individual figure, especially around the eyes, Shading around the left eye almost makes it look like he has got a black eye. It also looks like the painting on the eyes is not completely finished. There should be light blue circles on the iris, but instead it is left white. Boots also have a really nice shiny black finish. So, no major problems with the paint application, except some tiny issues with the paint finish. Overall, it's an awesome paint job all round very clean and colorful. Articulation Let's check the articulation on this monster. Head is on a swivel, so you can turn it from side to side, and even all around. He also has a hinge joint on his neck, so you can move the head forward and slightly backwards, but you can't really get him looking up at all. He has great ball and hinge joints at the shoulders allowing good range of movement, you have hidden hinge joints just above the elbows and there's nice swivels on the wrists. He has a cut at the waist, but there's no AB crunch. There are ball joints at the hips, so you can move the legs slightly outwards and backwards and forwards and swivel around, but there isn't much in a way of sideways movement. He won't be doing any splits, that's for sure. Knees have the basic hinge joint. The joints are really tight, and when you bend them, it leaves an ugly gap below the knee. And then you got the standard up and down movement at the ankles. Movement on the ankles is virtually non-existent, and they are pretty much useless. So, for the most part some pretty decent articulation there that works well. Only big issue I have with this figure is the extremely limited leg articulation. Joints are really tight, and he really suffers from the fact he is missing any kind thigh cuts. Without them the posing options with the legs are really limited, specifically you can't get any decent running poses out of him. It kind of stinks that the leg articulation is so restricted. Diamond select figures are not known to have that great of a articulation, but things leg articulation is bad even in their standards. Articulation below the waist is the worst I have seen on Marvel Select pieces. Really disappointing, but you don't buy Marvel Select figures expecting great articulation, you buy them for their incredibly good looks. Accessories As far as accessories go, he doesn't come with much. Diamond Select has been known to be quite random with their accessories, and the thing here really gets the short end of the stick. Thing only comes packaged with this fancy plastic stand that has some tech detailing 
and this double-sided cardboard background piece that's too small for a figure that's over 8 inches tall. It's just a waste of plastic and cardboard, far cry from the cool hover disc that thing was shown surfing in some of the promotional pictures. It would have been nice if they included some accessories, but he is so impressive he does not really need anything extra. Only weapon he really needs are his fists. Summary So, this has been a review of the Marvel Select The Thing. While there have been many The Thing figures released over the years, and some of them are pretty neat, they've always left me craving for more. I've always dreamed of owning a The Thing figure I could consider to be the ultimate Thing figure. He does have few issues with the paint application and the articulation, but he comes real close to achieving that. If you are a collector of Diamond Selects Marvel figures, huge fan of Fantastic Four, or The Thing's character itself, especially if you like his appearance, in the newer Ultimate Fantastic Four comic series, you are really gonna love adding this amazing figure to your collection. It's a massive, giant of an action figure, with a gorgeous sculpt that beautifully captures every detail of this character. I might go as far as saying this is currently the best looking thing action figure out there. Sure, the articulation is extremely limited, you could even argue it is closer to a statue than action figure, but the exceptional sculpt and the beautiful paint job makes this a must-have piece for every serious Marvel collector. He is just beautifully captured as the 7-inch scale action figure, and it will make an awesome centerpiece for your Fantastic Four collection. For a final grade, I will give him 8 out of 10. This review has been sponsored by Headhunter Store. For more information on Headhunter Store and their products, be sure to visit their website at www.headhunterstore.weebly.com and like them on Facebook. See you again on the next episode, and remember you're never too old to play with your toys. Strength left, yes! Oh! oh. Uh, drops him down! Now to the big splash! He's got a big splash! Two! He's down! 